Are you brand new to the game of golf? Have you never picked up a club before? Do you want to build your golf knowledge from the foundational level up to the very top? Well, you've come to the right place, my friends. The Suburban Ginger is going to take you back to basics. This is episode one, and we're going to get started right now. We're going to take a look at the golf club. As you can see, there are several different kinds of golf clubs. I've got a driver, I've got a putter, I've got an iron, I've got a wedge in my hand. They're all golf clubs. They all do different things. You can use them all in different ways as you get around the course. But we're going to take a look at one of these clubs in particular and just break it down to the basic level what this golf club is. So for our purposes today, my friends, I have selected my 7-iron. But we're not even going to call it a 7-iron right now. We're just going to call it a golf club because that is what it is. In a sense, a golf club can be broken down into three different parts. There is the grip, there is the shaft, and there is the head. All right, those are your three simple parts. The grip, obviously, is where you grip the club. That's where your hands go. There are several different ways to grip a golf club. We're going to cover that later. We're not talking about that right now, but there are grips, right? This is where you put your hands when you're getting ready to take your swing. There is the shaft connecting the grip down to the head. Shafts can be made of steel, like this one is. Shafts can be made of graphite, which you see a lot of tour players using graphite shafts. So there are different there are different weights, there are different um, stiffnesses to shafts, but again, we'll cover that all in a later video. And then finally, you have the head. Now, the head's going to vary a lot as you go down through your set of clubs. As you can see, this is the 7-iron. I'm going up there in case you guys thought I was lying to you. That's a 7-iron. This is a, a, a mid-iron, but the head is where the business is done. This is what's going to make contact with your golf ball, get that ball up in the air, get it moving. You can affect spin, you can affect launch angle. Again, a lot of different variables, a lot of different parameters, but in the simplest sense, this is it. Grip, shaft, head. This is one of the two tools that you need to play the game of golf. Of course, the other one being the golf ball. But there it is in the simplest sense, folks. Grip, shaft, so for the next part of this video, folks, I brought you back in to take a look at my bag. If you've already seen my what's in the bag video, you know the 14 clubs that are in here. You know what I'm swinging in 2017, but we're breaking it down to the most basic level, starting with the driver. This is my driver, the TaylorMade SLDR. Like all of the golf clubs, it has a head, it has a shaft, and it has a grip. But you're gonna use the driver you may uh, also hear them called uh, one woods perhaps uh, because originally these uh, clubs like these were made of wood the heads were wood and, and the shafts were wood and even though they're mostly made of, of steel and a number of other uh, metals they're still referred to as woods just a, a traditional thing but your driver is most often used to as the name implies drive the ball off a tee on a tee box. So if you're if you're playing a longer hole, you're probably going to want to hit driver off the tee. Um, but it depends on what you're trying to do, of course. The same can be said of what's called the three wood. Again, this is my three wood, and three wood simply meaning um, this type of club that was originally made of wood. I have a driver and a three wood. And some people might have four woods, five woods, six woods, seven woods. It just varies from set to set. But this, generally speaking, clubs like your driver and your woods are going to hit the ball. Uh, you're going to hit the ball the furthest with those, and you're going to hit them generally the lowest. But again, that's a broad rule. It's not universal. It varies from player to player. But generally speaking, your ball is going to go the furthest with clubs like your driver and your woods. Uh, now, I also have in my bag 
a hybrid. Now, as you can see, the reason they call it a hybrid is because it really looks like a hybrid between an iron and a wood. The head's not as big as, um, you know, the, the driver or the three wood, and it's bigger than the head of an iron, say. So some players struggle with getting the ball up in the air when they're hitting long irons. So if you're that type of person, you may want to look for a hybrid. This hybrid replaces my three iron. There are hybrids for uh, four irons, five irons, two irons. Um, so that's something that you're going to see a lot of, especially nowadays, the hybrid market really has taken off. So the hybrid is sort of your, your crossover between what your woods can do and what your irons can do. Now coming down to my irons, my iron set goes from four to nine iron. These clubs are gonna vary in loft. They're gonna vary in um, distance, but uh, these are gonna be doing a lot of your work out of the fairway, out of the rough. Um, originally they're called irons because originally they were again made out of iron. Um, nowadays most are made out of steel, as I mentioned, but these are your irons. They're gonna be doing a lot of the, the work when you're trying to get to the green, trying to hit your shots to the green. And then moving down to the wedges, once you're down here, I have four. Um, your wedges, your irons will probably be stamped with uh, numbers. Numbers reflect how much loft there is on the face. And we'll talk about loft in a different video. But um, general rule of thumb is the higher the number, the more loft there is on the club. Meaning the higher the ball will go, but the shorter distance the ball will go, um, I guess horizontally is what I'm trying to say. You're not going to be able to hit the ball as far, but you'll be able to hit the ball higher up in the air if you have an iron with a higher number, like an eight or a nine iron. Now I have these wedges, four wedges. Your wedges may be stamped with a number. They may be stamped with a letter. P for pitching wedge, A for approach wedge or gap wedge. You also see utility wedges or just the wedges stamped with a W for wedge or the wedge might be stamped with the loft itself. This wedge, which is a sand wedge, has 56 degrees of loft. My lob wedge has 60 degrees of loft with 10 degrees of bounce, but don't worry about bounce, we'll talk about that later. But these are the ones that you're gonna be able to hit the highest. These are the ones that you're gonna to wanna to be able to hit as you get around the green for those shorter shots, giving you a lot more control. So, overall broad principle, driver, Hits the ball the furthest, but doesn't hit the ball very high in the air. As you go down the bag, through your woods and your hybrids and your irons, the loft gets higher, the ball will go higher, but it will not go as far. All right, and finally, of course, you have the putter. This is what you're gonna use on or around the green to move the ball toward the hole. Now, the real question is, do you need all 14 of these clubs to learn how to play golf? The answer is no. And I'm going to explain as we wrap up this video. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, as a way of wrapping up, uh, I've given you a lot of information in a very short period of time, and I apologize for that. I'm trying to do this in as efficient a manner as I can, but I left you with a question. Do you need 14 clubs if you're just starting out learning how to play? The answer is no. You need one. You need one club, and you need one ball, and you need to have a place to practice. Your place of practice could be out in your front lawn or your back lawn. You may belong to uh, a golf club and you can go on the range and start to work. You may have to build your own hitting bay like what I've done here. You may have a junkyard of your own, a place where you can practice. But that's all you really need. You need one club with its grip and its shaft and its head. You need one ball and you need a place to practice. This is how Seve Ballesteros learned how to play. He had one club, he had a, a bunch of balls and he would go out and he would designed his own courses. He would put holes here and holes there and just chip and practice and work toward becoming uh, one of the greatest players of all time, which he certainly was. But that's what you need. You need one club, you need one ball. And that's all we need, folks. And that's where we're starting here. This is Back to Basics. Again, building your knowledge up, building your skills up from the ground up. If you guys like what you see, make sure you like and subscribe to the video. If you have specific requests, Things you want me to talk about in future videos, please post the comments down below. I read them and I'll get back to you, I promise, but stick around because this instructional series is just beginning. We're going back to basics. This is the Suburban Junior signing off. And remember folks,
One Club or 14, just keep swimming.